I am very excited about today's program, bringing together undergraduate students from the Doing Culture Narratives of Culture production class at York University and some of the stellar team behind the Six Academy, an innovative social entrepreneurship program in Toronto. Um, so Noah Muscat, a student studying in the Jewish Teacher Education Program at York University, will join us shortly to introduce the Six Academy panel and will be later participating in a discussion period. So after brief introductions, today's one hour webinar session will begin with a 15 minute presentation on the Six Academy by its creative director, Becky Dilio, business teacher, Kevin DeSosa, an art artist, student leader and mentor, Anika Albasith. The presentation will be followed by a discussion period with the panel where we will further explore how arts organizations can cultivate engagement with youth, center their voices and support their involvement and leadership within the arts and culture sector. We will leave some time at the end for questions. So throughout the presentation and discussion, go ahead and send us your questions via the Q&A box, which you can find at the bottom of the screen. Only the presenters' microphones will be on, so we will go through as many questions and comments as we can at the end of the session. You can also use the chat to let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from. You can also turn on the option for captions below the screen, which will create auto-generated captions. The webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our webinar series page where you will be able to access the recording for this as well as past webinars with French and English captions available. All right, so let's get things started. I'm going to invite uh, Noah to join us. And she can introduce our lovely panel. One second, folks. Um. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fernanda. <laughs> Hi, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're excited to hear from our panel today and dive into some questions after the presentation. I'm gonna introduce the Six Academy panel and they'll tell us all about this innovative art and design social activism program. Becca DeLeo is a practicing artist, illustrator, and the co-founder of the Six Academy Fashion Business Entrepreneurship Program and Central Toronto Academy. She rebranded the arts department as the Hearts Department as a result of working directly with community mentors and introducing social activism pursuits within the curriculum. Project collaborations have been in partnership with Spin Master, with the globally distributed Truly You Toy, Woodpecker Jackets, Norel, and Nogu Jewelry, as well as having a student designed sneaker with George Sully, Black Designers of Canada, inducted into the Beta Shoe Museum. Becky has been on the events committee for Time Razor Toronto, Fashion Group International, People for Education, Women Empowerment Awards, Walnut Studio, and more. She also instructs at a nonprofit organization, Youth for Change. Becky is also a recipient of the Prime Minister's Award for Teaching Excellence and has received Ontario and Canadian Arts Education Awards. We are also joined by Kevin D'Souza, a teacher, artist, and anti-racism educator living and loving in Toronto, Canada. He is also head of business studies and, as Becky told us, the teacher lead for all the awesome student cultural identity clubs at CTA slash Six Academy. And we have Anika Albasi. Since grade nine, Anika has been actively involved in every aspect of the, of the high school community and culture. She has spearheaded social movements, founded the Muslim Students Association, participated in several artivism initiatives, entered the school political circle in grade 10, and is now the elected school president. As a soon-to-be grade 12 graduate, Anika is involved in the Six Academy Social Entrepreneurship Fashion Program and is currently mentoring the grade 11's enrollment in this program. The, school she, the skills she has acquired within this program have provided her with an opportunity to be the recipient of an Entrepreneurship Ministry of Education school grant. In addition, she is a social media content creator who has been managing the Six Academy social media platforms and is also a henna artist and makeup artist. I'm now going to pass it off to Becky for um, her to give us a presentation about Six Academy. 
Thanks, Noah. Thank you for having us, Culture Days, as well. And thank you, everyone who has showed up this afternoon to join us to hear about our what we find is a very exciting program. Um, we're hoping that we inspire you by the end of our talk today. Um, we're here, we're available at Six Academy, if you can see behind there, on Instagram, if you ever wanna reach out and connect with any of our, our student content creators, just to dig a little bit deeper into our program and find out what it's really all about. So we'll skim the surface today. We've had a number of years of building our program, building our mentorship opportunities, and building a team, and it really is in part to the amazing, outstanding student leaders that we have, as well as the teacher leaders, as well as our community partnerships. So it, it's all about that team dy dynamic. And, and yeah, we're excited to share with you what we created here at the Six Academy. So we will start with our slide deck. Artivism is a term that we use within the arts and social activism curriculum. We are creating to create change. And as educators, as teachers, we really want students to understand that they have the skill sets, they have the talent, they have the creative drive, and they have their voices to be, to be that, that social change. Thanks. Okay, so the future is now. We have classroom connections, we have cross-curricular collaborations, we have movements that we've created, and we have a very extensive outreach um, connections and opportunities within our program. And again, I'm, I'm not sure what all areas and backgrounds you're from um, on the webinar today, but nonetheless, we are going to keep in mind that you may be from a, a creative community collaboration. Um, you may be educators yourselves, you may be future educators, you may be students. So we're, we're trying to inspire all of the above here. So um, I, it sounds very cliche, we use it all the time, but you know, thinking outside the box. So starting inside the box, which is your high school studio, and then moving out into the community. Um, we've also got cross-curricular collaborations like the Eco Club, Arts Department, BSA, um, X, the arts department, um, the truth and reconciliation legacy space. And we believe that every school club group team organization could use a creative marketing team. Do you want to talk about this? this is it another... Which one? This is, <laughs> sorry, I just have to move this little box right here <laughs> so we can read it. So a lot of our programs stem from uh, the groups that we have within our school, the activism groups that we have in our school. So we have the GSA, the Jewish Student Alliance, the Gay Straight Alliance. We have the Truth and Reconciliation uh, group, uh, the Muslim Students Community. So a lot of these student-run groups uh, basically bring their projects forward and we integrate them into the art that we create from this program. Absolutely. So stop the press and you need to champion your own movement. So don't, don't ever underestimate, again, the power of a youthful voice and commitment to their education. So you can definitely start your own movements for sure. Wait, I'm not changing the deck. Sorry, next. <laughs> okay, how it started. This is one of my favorite slides. It started back in 2007. We Take No Bull In was our very, very first initiative the year before Pink T-Shirt Day had started. And essentially we were very fed up with the, the homophobia that was happening across Canada within the school. And again, random acts of bullying and the students and myself, we just, we had enough. We were not tolerating it anymore. So we decided to form a collective and that was our movement. We take no bull in. And then from there, it just really kind of continued to to blossom and grow. Um, we turned it into a t-shirt movement. We had students in graphic design class make posters. And we noticed that we were wearing the t-shirts out in the community. People were saying, oh, I really like that t-shirt. How can I get one? So that was really the spark of, of our entire social entrepreneurial fashion business program. It was through a t-shirt movement. And then the Toronto District School Board for World Pride, they ended up printing out 200 of the t-shirts, turned them into pink, pink and black, and um, all of the supporters and allies and members of the GSA were proudly wearing our, our anti-bullying shirt initiative. And if you have a chance to visit our school, you'll see that that mark that uh, in terms of the anti-bullying, that the pink and black and the rainbow stuff is really prevalent through into our entire school and really attracts particular types of students here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In today's day and age as well, I mean, we have to continue to champion for, for members of our 2S LGBTQ community and um, and, and help them flourish and, and grow within, within the school and, and out in the community as well. Sorry, next slide. 
Okay, how it's going. So it started with a t-shirt concept and a movement now has evolved into students having their own fashion line, merchandise line. And every year our mentorship list continues to grow and evolve. Uh, we end up getting more and more students involved in the initiatives. And as Kevin mentioned, it's not just the business and the art students, it's now trickling into the Black Student Alliance group, it's Muslim Student Alliance group, the GSA groups as well. So our merchandise and fashion line, it's 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 expanding. <laughs> it, and it's all connected to social entrepreneurship. So all the profits that we make from these merchandise go back into anti-awareness uh, awareness raising programs at our schools. So it's, uh, it flows into seed money for our next projects. Mm -hmm. Next, thanks. And again, how it's going. So students have had an opportunity to be prepped for the media, to speak about our initiatives, to speak about our programming. And I have to say, as a teacher, it's really special to see, you know, the cameras out at our events that we throw and, you know, coming to the school to, to focus and highlight our project programming and, and just to see the students have that confidence to speak to the media about what they are directly involved in and what they've directly contributed to with regards to their, their school programming. I mean, it's exciting, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so, so basically create opportunities, build platforms for student art and talent to be seen and heard. So if, if the arts aren't thriving, then make them thrive in your school. Get the arts out there, make them visible, make them pre like present. Um, and this can be anything from a drama production to, to dance movements, to utilizing social media, to showcase student talent. Um, it all comes down to the efforts from the students and from your colleagues as well. So just go out there and make the art happen, make the creation process happen and celebrate it and advertise it and broadcast it. And students are all social media savvy now. So they're happy. You don't, I'm not saying all the educators out there have to do it and it's a lot of extra work. Give it to the students to do and provide them with community service hours. They can add this experience to their portfolios or CVs. Um, and then it eventually leads to paid opportunities as well in the communities to become content creators. So create your own pop-up parties. We're always having pop-up events, again, to celebrate student talent. It could be just in your main foyer. It could be out um, for a, a street festival, an arts festival. Find avenues, find platforms that maybe already exist out there, or like I said, just create your own. We used to, back in the day, when we introduced hip hop ad into the curriculum 20 years ago, um, we created our own block parties because there's a lot of students Student talent that loved to break dance. We had MCs, we had DJs, and we're like, you know what? We're going to use our basketball courts and we're going to use the front field and we're going to make our own block party to celebrate and showcase student talent. So, sachet, chante, silk screen designs. You could do patches, stickers. Was that cringe? Yes. <laughs> buttons to make a fashion statement get student artwork onto onto products and then they're going to be navigating in and around the city in and around your communities um, in and around your neighborhoods and people will stop them exactly what happened with the we take no bullying shirts people will stop the students the youth and say hey that's that's a really cool hoodie where'd you get that from and then it sparks up that conversation or they might be wearing a hat again that might be an opener for a conversation conversation to, to, again, to, to share what you're doing at the high school. And then, yeah, just presence and visibility, constant reminder that the arts are the foundations of society and they belong on the walls of the schools and the local buildings and establishments. Think Graffiti Alley and turn your school into Graffiti Alley. Um, collaborate with, with local merchants, with small businesses. Montreal and Toronto, we have a very thriving arts scene, um, which is amazing to see the street art. It just continues to expand in, in both cities. So Vancouver, you have some catching up to do. <laughs> um, so poster and public art movements, we are very much supportive of poster design, getting messaging out in print. Poster designs can live and exist on social media as well. Um, and these are the ideas and messages and imagery that are generated directly by the students. So how do you engage students? You find out, you know, what are they interested in? What do they want to express an opinion on? What do they want to stand behind and support? Because I've noticed over the years, I'm sure you can contest to this, that there's a 
the youth today, they want to be the change makers. They, they, are, they are activists, right? Um, so enlist in what, what, where their interests lie and what, uh, what their talents are as well and bring everything together. So we've done a massive wheat paste mural as you've seen with a local artist, Young Yemi, actually he's internationally known, he's absolutely amazing. Um, we've done sticker arts and, and just get students to recognize that their artistic contributions, they have a greater purpose than just existing in the classroom. So just to talk about one of these projects, the the, the wheat paste mural one, that can you tell us how that initiated? So in terms of what was happening at our school and who brought that idea forward? For sure. Um, Anika, do you want to speak to so that? So yeah, that mural was um, just about so showcasing women empowerment and diversity. Um, initially, it was just going to be to show um, Black excellence, but we thought it'd be nice to include the entire demographic of our school. Um, so we brought together um, women identified students in the, within the school, we got them in makeup, we had them dress in their cultural clothing. Um, and it was really just about showcasing diversity through the lens of women empowerment. And I think we did that excellently because when we first got that up, there was people walking by and like asking us questions, um, like yeah. what's, what is this, what's going on, it's beautiful. And it was really nice to just share that story and kind of open our eyes to like how our society kind of runs now. And um, yeah, just again, showcase beauty within um, culture. So that project, you had a photo shoot and from that photo shoot, students took away the art and then in your graphic mm -hmm. designs class, they modified the art. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, we had an artist come in called Yami Young to mm -hmm. work with the students in terms of recreating the photo shoot into uh, this graphic that you see. And then- yeah. And working with the students to actually put it up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And then we took that design and put it onto a t-shirt as well. Yeah. And So each of these <laughs> projects, yeah, they just branch out into other projects. So our BSA students wanted to do stuff around visibility in terms of showcasing black talent. And then they did some workshops around anti-black racism and so it all connected mm -hmm. back in many different ways back to the the art itself yeah. the process is quite organic right in the yeah. sense that it just it does continue to evolve and grow and then we're able to enlist in, in more student talent yeah. to to build a bigger and greater project and, and, and just to add to the end results here. And again, getting back to the art of collaboration, it really was a collaborative effort with regards to bringing stylists in, hairstylists, makeup artists. Um, and the students were so proud to be part of this initiative that day. And then to see the end results living on our school wall and it struck up a number of conversations within the community which was expected That's and then students really like the graphics so we yeah. transformed them to t-shirts we had mm -hmm. a mentor come yes. in and work with them in terms of how do you get a graphic onto a t-shirt and that became mm -hmm. a whole project on itself yeah. and then yeah. they sold those uh, t-shirts to fundraise for the bsa so it became another business project yeah. which was yes. a spin-off uh yeah it just continues yeah. on we yeah. always find a way to to make money yeah. <laughs> off our projects as well. Yeah, because it's, money is yeah. always a shortage. Like you have to <laughs> so find. that we can reinvest <laughs> in the program. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I just realized we're going to go way over 15 minutes. Sorry, Fernanda. Well, we only have 15 minutes. Okay, you better, okay. better get Okay, okay. Uh, our on walls. <laughs> Getting back to poster art. So what we try and do is we look for clients to collaborate with. Um, I noticed that back in the day, the TDSB, GSA network, they were always using stock image illustrations for their content, for their Instagram account. So we just sent them a quick message, a quick email, um, suggesting that maybe we could use some of our students' artwork for their for their ad campaigns and their social media content. And then we turned all the students' artwork, this is all done by different students in the class, we turned it into a poster design. So do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, so as I mentioned, all our, our creations generally have a really strong social justice focus and our students bring to their practice, I guess, a lens looking through it through anti-racism or anti-oppression. And they generally come to it with a very strong conviction of changing the world, change makers in terms of what they want to do and use art to make that change. Right. How and do you use art as a tool for social justice? And then and then as, as an educator, some of the educators out there find out what are the organization, organizations within in your neighborhood? Or it could be, you know, it could be an international organization as well. It could be a provincial organization. Um, just find out what's happening out there and find a way to make those connections. Um, or as well, I said earlier on, you can create your own movements. You can create your own organizations. And it doesn't well. mean, I mean, we, you worked with the coffee shop down the street yep. in terms of creating artwork for the yep. coffee shop. Well, and yeah. yeah, oh, you're going to bring yep. that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. So generating classroom conversations and using the arts as an outlet for social change. 
investigate what your students are interested in. So directly consult the students, right? Because it's, it's about growing the curriculum. It's about growing projects with them and, and, and providing them with, with a chance to have a say in, in, in the curriculum content. We're really into fashion here at yeah. our school. <laughs> what high school student is it? What youth is it? Yeah, so as you can tell, all our projects generally will have some type of fashion component to it, uh, which, you know, ties very well into graphic design. But, um, yeah. yeah, and cultural diversity as well. I mean, the, the city that we live in, Toronto here, obviously it's, it's very culturally diverse. So we want to champion um, just the beauty in all cultures and the artistry and tapestry and all that good stuff. So that the far right picture is um, the, the actual photo shoot that we took for the Young Yummy installation piece. And now we have some videos. <laughs> Bring that ass back like a boom, boom, boom. So getting back to cross-curricular collaboration and content development and creation, working with the math department on a hex duffel bag, which we happen to have over here. And I'm hoping everybody's paying attention online today because we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end of our presentation. We're going to have, we're going to have a question about our program and whoever answers it first in the group chat wins the bag and we'll mail that out to you wherever you may be in Canada. Um, so yeah, basically um, having the math department collaborating with, again, the business department. Yeah. So some of our students designed these little squares using code and some of them are math equations. So yeah. we wanted to do a collaboration with our grade nine students and uh, this was the result. We're pretty proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> Although no uh, no social justice con connection yes, there. There's, there's, there's <laughs> cultural textiles. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. fine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From backpacks to clothes, hats, and even shoes, all the merchandise on this table designed by students. And by Zamin on college near Bathurst with a project that's taking students out of the classrooms and into the real world. Going outside of the classroom is also important because like a lot of students aren't meant to be in a classroom like 24-7 and all the time. Like a lot of us needs to get out there and try our own things and learn from like experience and instead of textbooks. It's really like a part of your life when you really like get too into it. It's like a full-time job. Yeah. It was an artist's haven inside the Super Wonder Gallery this evening where students from the Central Toronto Academy unveiled a series of merchandise all conceptualized, designed and produced by them as they collaborated with a series of designers and business leaders. Last year, the Sixth Academy, a nickname they gave themselves, unveiled the Wolf Sneaker, a shoe designed by students at the school. This year, the centerpiece for tonight was a Wolf Pack backpack, designed by a student whose creative ideas saw her creation come to life. We had to make something that was uh, interesting, that people would want it, but also it was simple. All these designs are now available for purchase, but more importantly, the program encourages students to think outside the box and for the school's faculty to provide lessons and tools that don't conform to traditional teachings and to collide two worlds, art and business. Part of it is we teach students about real life skills and this is one of the things that we've done with collaboration with our arts department. They learn from professionals out in the community and they see what is offered for them out in the real world. It's not all about what happens in the classroom, it's really about real world experiences. What do you hope to accomplish when you walk in that classroom every day? I want to be that person to sort of show them to be like, you could do it, you know? Yeah. Very inspirational. I want to be that inspirational figure. What do you think is the most important thing you learned from this? I think group work is the best and teamwork. We have to like work a lot together. What values do you take from it? Like you can just like do whatever you want. I'm not gonna work as a designer. I'm going. I'm planning on working with film in the future. But I learned about stuff that I'm going to need for it. The Sixth Academy already has plans for next year's project. They're hoping the students will help to design a jacket on college near Bathurst. I'm Faisal Mean for City News. Manifest to that one. <laughs> 
So as you can see, if there isn't an existing festival such as culture days happening in the community, then make your own party, make your own event, get the students directly involved in event preparation. And that will further engage them as well, because it's exciting to provide an opportunity to showcase your talent and, and all your awesomeness and what you've created. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, also, content creation collaboration with outside organizations. So Bike to School approached our school because we had this amazing uh, bike repair program back in the day and um, they wanted a new logo mascot. So they enlisted in our student talent. And because we're constantly posting stuff on social media and, and talking about our programming and having opportunities like Culture Days to, to shine, shine a spotlight on what we're doing, um, small businesses recognize that hey there's a lot of talent that exists in our own community let's let's check out what they're up to and see if they want to work with us on on a group project together so yeah we designed some little raccoon mascots there and then getting back to our wheat paste and sticker art we sticker things up across the city um just put together some decks, approach some local small businesses. And this idea came from during the pandemic, we wanted to support some local cafes and find a way to showcase student talent because we're all in lockdown. So this is an opportunity for students to, to learn from, from a local business about you know, what, what makes them tick, what makes them succeed in the community, um, you know, maybe where they get their coffee beans from, uh, fair trade, ethically sourced coffee beans. Um, and yeah, learn some insights scoop about the business and then students created artwork as as a result of these conversations that we had and the work went up online as well in the cafe so it was like a, a double a double exhibition opportunity for students and this was Madeiras and the Tempered Press in Toronto we also did some content creation collaboration with a local female run boxing studio, girls just want to box. Um, so students were able to use traditional artistic techniques and talents to, to video, to photography, to digital arts. So tapping into all areas of the arts for content creation. Some did like some little dances as well. So it was great. And then we did some content creation as well for the Urban Indigenous Center. That's Dr. Duke Redbird in the bottom right hand corner. We also did some DJing for a virtual event uh, through People for Education and did some digital artwork as well. And that was our former student, Lindsay Buckingham, that did some beautiful artwork for some of the um, guests at, at a gala fundraiser event. As well, getting into digital content creation, we had students put together a deck for Plan Canada because we, again, recognize that here's an organization that's doing amazing things for girls' education on an international scale. How can we lend our artistic talents and our art design to their initiatives? Um, again, using a lot of stock, stock illustration. Um, so we put together a proposal, students did actually put together this deck proposal as to how we could add another level of artistry to their organization. And then in return, um, Plant Canada is very excited about working with our students. In return, we had a chance to speak to the organizers and learn about what their initiatives were all about. Um, and students had an opportunity to get their work showcased on their Instagram account. And then students' artwork was printed off as well and sent to a number of the donors. So we were raising awareness, we were raising funds through the artwork and getting student artwork showcased online and then one of our students did the pitch deck for Plan Canada and that's Jyoti Adich who's also a graphic designer now um content creation we're talking about that quickly in here um yeah so I think I started doing content creation actually right when I got into the school so um uh, I started in grade nine when I first when it was when I first started, and since then we've been able to do content creation for all the various projects we've done, mm -hmm. um, and also just like whenever like I feel like oh, we could probably do something to like spice up the social media, I've been able to have the opportunity to do so. And um, my background for content content creation for Risk Six Academy has allowed me to get um, opportunities to do content creations for other organizations um, that are youth based and. Yeah, it just opened a lot more um, opportunities for myself and also gave us the exposure that we needed through social media because social media is now pretty much the only way people communicate. So that's yeah. wild. <laughs> 
So our students actually get hired, which is really exciting as well because of our community outreach, because of our mentorship base that we have. Um, professionals recognize that there's so much talent at the teenage age group level. Uh, this is one of our students who ended up win winning a design contest for No Goo Jewelry, and he was employed by the company after that. This is Roberta. She's in the center here. She did a animation video for RBC Securities, and she's now working for RBC. And this is another student on the right-hand side, Rania, who did some content creation for Couture Jewelry, which was a project in our class. And then she ended up getting a co-op placement through the jewelry company and then ended up getting hired for a summer content creation job. So there's cross-curricular collaboration that can happen within the arts. So I'll let the teachers in the audience, uh, we'll be posting this deck later on as well. So you can take a look at how we've, we've gotten the arts <laughs> into all the uh, pockets of the school. And another example of, of math and computer tech and computer graphics coming together with the arts and then putting artistic designs onto clothing. So you want to talk about that quickly? Oh, yeah. And so, again, coming back to our local student run groups, uh, they're always asking us to create content for them. And these are some of the examples of uh, uh, posts as well as t shirts that we've designed for those groups. So, those of you that run arts organizations or small businesses or companies out there, if you ever need any merchandise, it could be a water bottle, it could be a mug, um, it could be, we want to be mindful of fast fashion, so we don't want to be putting too many t-shirt projects out there. But nonetheless, um, you could always reach out to a local high school and see if the students can create your, your swag, your merchandise for your companies. And that creates that conversation piece. And then students have to make their own pitch decks as well. So they learn how to put together um, a visual pitch deck for themselves in, in hopes of winning the design contest. Wearable art with a message, some, some patches and hats. So wearable art with a message, we did a fundraiser for the Canadian Legion. The problem was everybody loses their poppies every year. It's adding to landfill. Why not enlist in student talent to create a ceramic poppy that, that people are proud to wear. It's an original work of art. Obviously, we sold them for a lot more than a poppy. Um, and we ended up doing um, an information card that honored the lives of lost Indigenous war vets. And it was a great conversation piece as well. And then your class did the Yeah, grades, my right? grade nine computer science class did the graphic design. And so again, uh, the collaboration between- With the visual uh, arts yeah. department and graphic design class, computer science. And these are some of the cards. So from there, we came up with the idea of Project Orange Heart, and we would love to see this project go nationwide. So similar to how every November, um, people wear a poppy to honor the lives of indigenous or war vets and indigenous war vets. We would like to see every school, elementary to middle school to secondary school, post-secondary school, make a heart, and it can be out of any materials, found objects, ceramics, air dry clay, um, and create a conversation around the residential system and the survivors and the lives that have been lost over the years and, um, and, and create a fundraising piece and a conversation piece around Project Orange Heart. We have a 50-page deck that we're going to be rolling out with the Daddy Wenjack or organization as well um, because it would be great, like I said, to see every school get involved in this. We actually enlisted and hired Indigenous wisdom keepers and elders to come into the class and speak on the topic. Topic. We enlisted in the talents of Rebecca Baird, who is a nationally acclaimed artist. We did a beading project as well. So we did some, some beaded heart designs. And then we raised funds for the Andy Ewan, which is an Indigenous Women and Children's Center as well. So there was that fundraising piece that students did. And we did a whole social media campaign around that as well. So it will be great. It's going to happen every September. People across Turtle Island are going to be wearing an orange heart. And we worked with um, the Indigenous TDSB trustee as well. So getting um, student messaging onto project, onto products such as hoodies and sweatshirts. This was a mental health campaign that we initiated. And student design work, student voice, again, student voice directly onto products. 
these are all the mock-ups from the deck. And then we like to take it one step further. So once we go into a winning design and students are really great, they support their peers when, when it comes time to pitching their ideas and pitching their decks. And everyone has always been in agreement with what one is going to be the winning design. And then students get behind their peers artwork and, and create a whole social media campaign around that. And again, TikTok videos to little dance videos, um, you name it, all areas of the arts, all arts disciplines. Collaborate with community events. And these are just some community events that we've been part of over the years. We have to obviously include culture days in there. We are very appreciative of, of this collaboration that's happening right now as well. Yep, just some more community events, community events collaborations, masquerade collaboration. So dream big and pitch even bigger. So no idea is too small. We worked with um, the Museum Bombardier of Ingenuity with Six Academy, uh, came up with this little template, this social justice warrior template that we did using their makerspace 3D printer out in, in Quebec um, and created these fashion plates. And then the students and I thought, you know what, why don't we pitch Spin Master? Like this is a really great toy idea. And that was a bit of a process, but we ended up making it happen and students were directly involved in the pitch deck. And um, right now we're doing women empowerment, uh, jewelry, bangle, bracelet design. And then I'll let Anika just kind of quickly go for the last, the last couple of slides and then she might bring it back to some of the slide deck stuff there. Um, yes, yeah, so the Bangle project was again a woman empowerment um, project and the winning design was actually a des um, design um, made by a Turkish uh, student and it was basically a hands on the hips and um, the pattern is just a female figure with her hands on her hips that is often used in kilns um, and flat carpet tapestry that is done in traditionally in Turkish culture. Um, the entire project was meant to kind of in support of the situation right now that is going on in Iran, um, where women are obviously being oppressed and are taking their rights are being taken away. So it was just about raising awareness of that and kind of in general, just bringing people together, um, just like many of our pro uh, projects. So, yeah. Celebrating art, culture and beauty. And this is just a recap of, of what we have previously discussed in the deck. And then just some of our personal partners, obviously these are all Toronto-based partners. Mm -hmm. So yeah, If the Crown Fits was um, a project that I helped, um, I guess, direct with mm -hmm. my Iranian peers. Um, and again, it was another woman empowerment. We had students wear and make um, their own, I guess, crowns. So people wore their hair in like their natural um, texture, uh, people had flowers in their hair. Um, a lot of the girls um, made their own headpieces. Um, and then each of them had like little um, statements as well um, of what their what their crown means to them and the story behind it. And it was really just about kind of like telling it, um, society, just keep your hands off of my head, really. <laughs> just this is my crown. And I have a crown to wear. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna wear it. <laughs> just accept it as is. And again, it was just fighting back against the terrible situation that the women in Iran are facing, as well as women around the world, because from, honestly, from ages now, um, women have been oppressed. And um, it was just, again, another way of like fighting that back and just saying, this is who we are. And um, whether you like it or not, I'm gonna continue doing what I wanna do. Thank you. And then from there, we're going into um, the contact Festival, we had our artwork at Gallery 44, and we're going to be part of the Canadian International Film Festival, so students did a documentary as well. So again, taking a project and finding avenues, opportunities, platforms to continue to showcase the work that students do in the classroom yeah. studios mm -hmm. and stuff. So um, that was our deck. So we, were, well, we went way, way over, over time. <laughs> Sorry, no. um, just real, so real quick, we hope that you were all inspired by, by what, um, what you saw there and some of the projects that we've spearheaded. What was the very, okay, the question is, this is normal. what was the very first project that sparked the Six Academy social justice movements? And you can let us know in the chat, whoever gets it first, right? The very yes. first movement yes. initiative. What was it called? We got it. So Beth Bernard got it first, I believe. 
no bullying. Bullying. <laughs> we take no bullying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. Bob. We'll get your address and we will mail this out to you. Thank you. After March break. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for that amazing, amazing presentation. It's really, truly incredible, everything that you're doing and really inspiring. Um, so we have actually quite a few questions from the audience. So we're going to jump into some of um, organizer focus. How can you involve, even if you're not in the art sector conversation? So Noah, take it away. Great. Thank you so much. So we're now going to further discuss youth engagement and arts in our discussion period. Um, so how can other art community groups, art organization, institution engage with youth successfully and positively? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, I would say just recognizing that youth are talented and we are quite literally the future um, of our world today. So I think just that first step of recognizing that at the end of the day, it's it's going to be youth that are going to be taking over. So recognizing their talents and pushing them to, you know, I'm um, sorry, just pushing them to take part in these endeavors and um, whatnot is just the very first step of creating more engagement within these different sectors of school. Yeah. And I think just, uh, you know, opening the uh, an invite open from yeah. uh, another organization, Reach whenever out. we get an, uh, a message from another mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. in terms of let's collaborate, let's think about an idea together. It's amazing. And it really generates a lot of energy in terms of working with mm -hmm. our students because our students love to connect outside of our schools yeah, and come up with projects that are beyond just the four walls. So, absolutely. Um, you know, and I think a number of organizations have reached out saying, mm -hmm. hey, can we oh, work yeah. on something yep. together? Yes. And that's yes. really the first step. Yeah, definitely communication, reach out, but have a bit of an idea on your end to present to the students, like the bike to school, the mascot idea. When we did the mask for aid in this initiative as well, that was through CAS school, local school, um, kind of had a deck ready for us as well. And we were able to like add our own creative spin on things, but um, it was it was there that the initial idea was there and we were able to jump in. So. Or bring a problem forward, right? Yes, this is problem, an issue yeah. and, yeah, how, and then we can work with our students in terms of what can we do to solve, what can yeah. the youth do to solve yeah, this problem? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And they can come up with their own ideas mm -hmm. and pitch them and then uh, move forward from there. And then when, when, when you recognize that, that again, your creative talents are going to be so much more than what you're doing just in the classroom, I find the engagement levels through the roof after oh, yeah. that. Like if students know that this is a community initiative. Yeah, if yeah. it's a real problem There's that so they're exciting. actually affecting, they're, yeah. I think they're much more connected yeah. to him. Because they, they are more inclined to want to make an impact when they have that sort of um, opening, basically. And community support. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you um, see them out there, it's like... Yeah, it's always, a, it's always <laughs> a surreal moment to see that your work is out there and that you really did that, so... Yeah. It's bigger than the school. Yeah. It's bigger than the school, yeah. Yeah, um, just a quick um, follow up on what and what you're discussing just now. Someone asked particularly, you know, how is it um, that you can involve students that might not be particularly or youth that might not be particularly interested in arts and culture or have not been traditionally trained in educational um, arts programs? What's some of the strategies that you advise uh, those folks to engage with youth in what capacity? I find that energy is so infectious and what you would do is you would kind of reach out to the teacher, the educator, and then what I typically do is I kind of assign certain students to certain roles and, and have have the entire class recognize that it's a it's a collaborative effort year so get some of the leaders going and then and then it just they they just run with it and then other students want to get involved um and it's unbelievable i've had students with you know mental health initiatives and issues and stuff really um reserved and and recluse and then by the end of the project like they're volunteering to be at the event and to help out with the events like it's just unbelievable once you kind of get that momentum going um you'd be surprised how that energy is very infectious and each project has many different components to yeah, it yeah students yeah. latch yeah. on to what they're interested in i think mm -hmm. having different options for students to connect with is key so mm -hmm. some of the projects could be text-based where students are good writers and yes. some of them aren't photography or yeah. fashion or makeup 
makeup or social media and then uh, connecting all of those into the bigger project somehow. And that takes a lot of work yeah. on, on the teacher's part. Assign but, different roles yeah. and recognize what your students' strengths are. Yeah. I also think student to student, it's really infectious to like, you see one student that kind of takes that leadership role and it could be a friend or just someone you've talked to, but that kind of pushes you to get more involved. Um, so seeing students as like the face of these projects and like mm -hmm. the leaders is really helpful for like a student who's more, you know, times tends to be in their own little shell um, and it helps them kind of like branch out. And I found, and, and that's something that's kind of what happened with me. Like I was never really super, I guess, leadership-esque. Really? <laughs> not, at least not before <laughs> high school. Okay. And, I'm like, I'm um, about you, but and I leader. think it was really just seeing other students kind of take that stand that helped me. Um, branch out and doing well. group work assigning students in oh, groups yeah. and Here, friendly competition always yeah. helps so we always put some type of competitive, yeah, competitive element into our project mm -hmm. yeah. uh, some students like it and some don't but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't please everyone yeah. great great um so what do you think is the best way for a municipality to engage with students at local schools so that we can support their art and curriculum along with showcasing their talent the municipality at a, at a municipal level. Um, I think a lot of it comes from funding as well. So make sure that there are some funding, like if you want to enlist in, in, in youth involvement, you know, say, okay, well, we can go into this project. I'll, we'll give you some of the startup funds for the paints that you may need, some board panels. We might be doing something with the um, Toronto Zoo and a local street artist as well, and through Start Toronto, which is a street art municipal organization. So we are just reaching out to them to ask us to provide us with the board panels and some of the spray paint and and give us some of the, uh, yeah, the materials that we need to get started on a project. And some of our project, the funding didn't come from arts organization, they came from entrepreneurship organizations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I know the city was at some, a few years ago, we're really promoting entrepreneurship and uh, many of our students took advantage of that. And Anika is actually part of one of those projects now. Uh, yeah, so uh, because of like all these like, um, I guess TDSB really, they released a grant for entrepreneurs um, within like, I guess the TDSB. That's who, it's <laughs> so the, it was through the, the ministry, through the ministry. Provincial. Yeah, so it was a provincial grant. And um, so me and a couple of other students um, within the school applied for it and we got it, thankfully. And mm -hmm. now um, I am releasing my own product in by the end of this month, yeah, yeah. at yeah. our Mentors Mixer mm -hmm. event. So yeah, that's just one of the examples. Of Again, re reach out and just a little bit of startup funding from the city would be great or from the organization, just for materials. Yeah. I guess on that line, so what are some good insights that you've gained when you're turning a creative idea into a project, into an event, into a community event where you want to, want to attract youth? Um, you know, is there specifics of how your planning process goes and where to include leadership within students, even though you've just told us that the more student run it is, the most beautiful and engaging the project it will yeah. be yeah and you could you want to answer that how do we really get our projects off the ground um, so yeah it'll kind of like just stress in one of these studios where we're just kind of sitting we're like talking about the idea and then it really just comes from like getting other students involved again like how you said I initially mentioned that it was really just student to student and um, yeah, so getting other students involved, obviously like writing grants and all of that um, comes with this, so, like the technical pieces, but it really just starts with like a couple of students. Conversations. Branching. Yeah, the conversation is where it starts. And then it branches out to, um, you know, your friends or your, for me, it was like my sister, I wish I got involved into like the newest project we did, that we did. Um, so yeah, it really just starts in a little room and a little group of kids. And then everyone just kind of brings in their friends and, yeah, that's how we really grow our projects. Yeah, and, then, and not all of them take off. We, yeah. have, we have tons of ideas and then uh, we <laughs> try them out and wah, wah, test and drive them on students and then some of them like, yeah, maybe, maybe this is not such a good idea. And that idea. is part of being an entrepreneur as you well. Like yes. you're, none of, yeah. Not all of your ideas are going to, you know, take flight. So you have to be ready and prepared for that um, to happen. So it's really just about pushing as much as you can <laughs> to get the project out there. And if it doesn't, then just move on and to the next project. Or really. reiterating it, changing it, yeah, tweaking changing it. it. Exactly, yeah. 
and merging it with someone yeah, yeah. recognizing what what's working and then mm -hmm. if again if there is that momentum going like okay let's see if we can take it one step further let's see yeah. if we could take the if the crown fits project right like yeah. it's going to be a photography project we're going to mm -hmm. turn into a calendar yeah. we're having an event around it yeah we're making a documentary out of it it's just yeah it was a, it was a very empowering project mm -hmm. and a lot of students were engaged and wanted to participate mm -hmm. from all different cultural backgrounds and um so that one really took off yeah there's a lot of momentum around that and it's also, because of the messaging behind yeah. it too and i also think it's about representation as well mm -hmm. because Good. i don't think any of us would want to be in this project if we didn't feel like we'd be represented represented in them um because yeah. obviously nice. like growing up in marginalized background you grow up with very little media or no media at all that's about you or if it is about you it's not specifically like say like if it's a brown girl it won't be a brown girl who wears the hijab like it's like these little things and it just doesn't encourage you to be involved as much but when you see projects like the women empowerment projects um the if the crown fits you see that you see yourself in them mm -hmm. and so it encourages you and other students to kind of um be involved and take that next step in being a leader. Yeah. And Nika, your passion is really inspiring. So <laughs> what motivates you to be part of the creative life of your high school and community? Yeah, so I, I guess we can go back to the diversity and representation. Um, also, like, again, like seeking out social justice and um, career opportunities. Those are all things that kind of motivate me specifically. Um, but for me, it's always just been about being recognized as um, someone who, I, like, I'm not just a person who wears the hijab, like, I'm much more than that. And I think a lot of the other students and my peers feel the same way that we're not just defined by our skin colors or whatnot. We are so much more. Mm -hmm. And I think these products really help us to kind of get that out there and get that message across. Um, so for me, like, getting involved in these projects is really just about um, kind of telling my story and where I'm coming from and hoping to just even inspire one person. And because inspiring one person is enough for me, but imagine inspiring like so many others when these mm -hmm. projects go on a global scale. So yeah. <laughs> Which they have. I mean, Which, yeah. one of, one of the Spin Master characters was oh, modeled yeah. after Anika, and that's a global project. Yeah. So yeah. So we're the influencer. I know we're getting <laughs> kids. We're influencing kids from a very young age that you can be anything you want, and these games or whatever we're doing is going to inspire them, or hopefully inspire them to kind of take um, or just dream big. Really, it's, <laughs> it's really cliche, dream big, whatever. But um, yeah, it just. It allows them to kind of think outside the box, like we mentioned earlier. We like we like our cliches. <laughs> Dream big, think outside the box. Yeah, <laughs> got to no, do it. We're very flowery around here. <laughs> <laughs> no, amazing. Um, something that might be helpful for event organizers in the call right now to know. So, as both of you, student, a student, and teachers in high schools, we know that you're extremely busy with a lot of things. So, if there's folks like community organizers, event organizers that would like to collaborate with schools. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's the best way to go about that? Um, create collaborative projects between community and, and schools. Send a clear invite because a lot of times um, I know in my inbox, I'll just receive an email about something happening, but we don't really know how we can contribute. Um, so that's great that there's something happening, but maybe be like, hey, I've, I've heard great things about your school, about what the youth are doing within your community. Can we collaborate? Here's yeah. what we have built. You know, what, what can you bring to the table? Um, so just that personalized initial introduction versus just like a blanketed email, like, you know, here's our organization, sign up. Um, I have to say there's Arts Etobicoke as well, which is really great. They do some wonderful things out in the community, community outreach, and they're pretty clear and specific. Again, Culture Days as well. It's it's It was an easy enough um, template to sign up for Culture Days and just to be aware of what initiatives that you already had going on. Um, and I know many years ago, I was part of one of the inaugural Culture Days events in, in Stratford. So um, just continuing to create that buzz around your organizations. So it is on our radar. Like we were part of Nui Blanche one year as well. Nui Blanche is huge and there's a lot of PR and publicity around that. And um, maybe even have somebody in each organization that would be in charge of working with teachers 
to create a project because the Nuit Blanche one was, was a little daunting. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit daunting, but we did it for a couple of years. Uh, but we had some community partners helping us with our application for that. So not every teacher is going to know how to how to fill out the application and ensure that their vision and their ideas are going to be able to manifest themselves. So mm -hmm. having somebody part of the organization that can work directly with teachers and you. Yeah, it's about removing some of those roadblocks that are really challenging. I mean, teach, we have very little time, right? All of yeah. this stuff has to happen outside of the classroom normally. No, but we can do it with it. So what we, what I try to do, you yeah. do it too, what are you talking about? <laughs> we do it in the classroom. We make it part of the classroom yeah. um, programming um, because it is so much more exciting to be part of something like, for culture days, for example, all the uh, extra artwork we wanted to put on the ground for our, for our guests to come in to, to see and, and take in and, and get the legacy space fully set up for, for the guests for culture days too. So it gives us incentive to like really to get on things. And again, creates that excitement, generates that buzz. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. I can't believe the hour just like flew by. Um, you shared so many amazing insights. Something that really stuck stood out to me that you mentioned is, you know, if the arts aren't thriving in your school and your community, make it happen, make that creation process happen and make it seen. I think there's a lot of ways to create events just about showing that creation process and that process in itself is already, you know, amazing thing to witness and to showcase and to highlight. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. Um, thank you, Kevin oh, and Becky. You and Anika for all the amazing insights you shared with us today, and Noah for facilitating this with us. Um, the presentation, Becky, uh, will be available um, for everyone to take a look at. We'll share it later in our webinars page. So again, thank you. Yes. So I just I just feel we probably didn't answer anybody's questions because we took far too long on that deck. So if anyone would like to reach out, I could put my email in the group chat um, in case there's any follow-up that you would like to happen after this? Thank you. That's very kind of you. We did have <laughs> a very, very lively chat and Q&A um, questions. So apologies if we did not get the chance to get through all of them. But yeah, thank you, Becky, for offering that. Um, just a reminder that this webinar is part of resources that we offer year round and in preparation for the Cross Canada Culture Day celebrations in the fall. Culture Days is a celebration of arts, culture and creativity. This year is running from September 22nd to October 15th, 2023. And over this three week run, organizers, volunteers, artists, creators, community members from all over Canada, showcase the important role that arts and culture play in strengthening communities through free participatory events. So the recording of this webinar will be later available on our YouTube channel and as well as our webinar page with the presentation and some links to the awesome work that Six Academy is doing. Um, thank you so much, everyone. This was awesome. We're just reading through the chat right now. So <laughs> thank you everybody yeah, again for coming. Great. And yeah, we're we're here. We hope that we can inspire you and and follow up with any ideas and events. Oh, like a collaboration. collaboration. So we're here. We're here to collaborate. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Okay. And have an awesome sunny day ahead. Okay. okay. Bye, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye.